This is the one that you saved. You are as its father. A clan of two. But you have removed your helmet. Then you are a Mandalorian no more. Your cult fractured our people. Where were you then? Did you think your dad was the only Mandalorian? Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. They finally officially dropped the Mandalorian Season 3 trailer, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. Of course, I'll be doing videos for all the episodes. It's going to be starting in early February this year, so we won't have to wait that long. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. I'll also be doing episode videos for Star Wars Andor. That's going to be like the next big Star Wars series to start. As you can see, this trailer is basically like the same footage or some of the same footage that we saw before, just in crisp HD quality. So it's nice to finally get the official version of this, but I will talk about the extra footage that they didn't put in this that we have seen before. Remember, this is also going to connect with what's happening on the Ahsoka series. That's probably going to jump around in the timeline a little bit. There was also an Ahsoka teaser trailer video that they released at Star Wars Celebration recently. I talked about that during my last Mandalorian Season 3 trailer video, like what the footage actually revealed, who's in the trailer, so I'll link that below in the description, like I said. Those episodes will air after the Mandalorian Season 3 episodes. The Mandalorian Season 3 is going to premiere during early February next year. But the brand new footage mostly focuses on all the Mandalorians that they're going to feature during Season 3. All the current Mandalorians that are following Bo-Katan Kryze, because remember, her whole thing is becoming the leader of all Mandalorians and sitting on the Beskar throne, so to speak. Like, make all the Game of Thrones Iron Throne jokes. There were separate trailer footage of Mando walking down a hallway that's meant to be a replica of the main throne room on Mandalore. Unless they've changed the design, it's not the actual main throne room, because I think that Dave Filoni wants to be pretty accurate to what they were depicted during Star Wars Rebels, and we saw the actual throne room during Star Wars Rebels and the Clone Wars. It was way bigger than the throne room that was featured in the Mandalorian Season 3 trailer, so I think that's why the Mando scene is happening on a different planet. And it also features a lot of the Mandalorians that are now part of Mando's old covert following the armor. There might be other groups of Mandalorians out there because they kind of tease that they all went to ground all across the Outer Rim. Like, there are many coverts of surviving Mandalorians. It's not just these two giant factions. But that's the way they make it seem in the teaser trailer. Like, there's a bunch of Mandalorians that follow the armor that believe one thing and a bunch of Mandalorians that follow Bo-Katan that believe something completely different. That was the whole thing they were hyping up during the Book of Boba Fett episodes, is that the armor really, really hates Bo-Katan. So I think we're building up to a situation where they're going to force Mando to decide who he's going to support. Like, does he want to join his old covert again, become a Mandalorian? Because that's another big thing during the teaser trailer footage, too. Them actually going back to the wreckage of the Mandalore planet and the actual dome city of Mandalore. You see it in the teaser trailer footage. It almost looks like the wreckage of one of the Death Stars, but it's actually the dome city of Mandalore that you saw during Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. Like, the dome has been destroyed. It's completely exposing the city. But the footage starts with the heavy infantryman, played by Jon Favreau, firing his large heavy blaster at the sky in the middle of a crowd of people on this sand-based town. There's a bunch of different footage from this particular episode on the same planet. It seems like it's the same planet where the armor has put her new forge inside this cave system. Remember, the last time we saw the heavy infantryman, he was fighting Mando for the honor of wielding the Darksaber, and he lost. 
There are a bunch of other Mandalorians, random townspeople running around behind him as he's firing at something in the sky. Because he's the heavy infantryman, all of his weapons are powerful enough to take out a small ship, so that seems like what he's firing at. Then there's a completely different scene of the same group of people, same Mandalorian, same heavy infantrymen, firing at something else, but using their jetpacks and their regular blasters. But it's the same desert landscape. It's not Tatooine, it's just very similar looking landscape to Tatooine. There's two different Mandalorians using their wrist grappling hooks, like the ones that you've seen Mando and Boba Fett use in the past. There's a new scene of Mando and Grogu in his Naboo N1 starfighter looking at the window, just passing by a rock formation. Mando and the armor are left on good terms last season, like even though she said that you have to do all these things on the planet Mandalore, bask in these waters, to be considered a Mandalorian again and regain your honor. It's really his relationship with Bo-Katan during the season 3 trailer footage that they tease is deteriorating. Like, his relationship with her is getting worse because she really wants the Darksaber and she has to fight him in order to get it. But it does seem like a lot of the season will be him working with groups of Mandalorians. But there are a couple new Imperial scenes, new scenes of Star Destroyers, like actual Star Destroyers that people have during the timeline of the Mandalorian, which seems like more of a Grand Admiral Thrawn teaser. So I think they want you to remember that really it's the Empire that's technically the villain in all this. There's a scene of the armorer presenting someone with a new blue Mandalorian helmet. It's the same blue color that Bo-Katan's Night Owls wear, but it's not clear if it's just another random blue colored Mandalorian helmet she's created, or if it's connected to the Night Owls themselves, because it doesn't have any of the trademark Night Owl symbols on it. During my other season 3 trailer with a different footage, I talk about her new forge area, so like I said, that link is below in the description if you want to learn about that, but it's basically her just moving her forge and her covert of Mandalorians to a different place, and Mando visits her on this new planet. There's a new scene of a brand new Imperial character in an office. The footage is so blurry that I can't tell who it is, but the way they show him makes it seem like he's going to be a bigger character during Season 3. There's a new scene of Grogu inside the Naboo N1 Starfighter in the middle of a dogfight with shots lighting up the canopy. It's connected to the scene of Mando doing some trick piloting against what seems like some Imperials in an asteroid field. Anytime you see a dogfight in an asteroid field, you either think of Empire Strikes Back in that dogfight, or you think of Attack of the Clones in that asteroid dogfight with Obi-Wan Kenobi. But it seems like there's a couple other scenes of Grogu pushing buttons in the ship, them using an R5 droid in place where Grogu would normally sit, with them flying in and out of these asteroids and trying to take out this secret facility that's also on another asteroid. So it seems like it's part of some larger mission that they're on. And it does seem like they're bringing back those funny moments of Grogu just loving to press buttons, like from season one with him pressing buttons when he wasn't supposed to, and when he was banging on the cockpit telling Mando to make the Naboo N1 Starfighter go faster, like he's doing that himself this time. There's a new scene of a bunch of Mandalorians wearing blue armor using this dropship method to enter combat. Like a group of them are literally being dropped out of a ship like a couple missiles, but they all have jetpacks, so they all start flying around the minute that they drop out of the ship. This could be connected to the scene of the armor creating that blue Mandalorian helmet, so they could belong to her group, because there are a lot of fight scenes that take place on this desert-based planet that looks kind of like Tatooine, but probably isn't Tatooine. They probably got everyone's notes, like, we're going back to Tatooine way too many times in all these Star Wars series. Stop going back to Tatooine so much. The only other thing about this group of Mandalorians is that all the Mandalorians that are part of Bo-Katan's group, the Night Owls, all wear special blue armor, but they all have special markings that mark them as Night Owls. There's another new scene of the armor attacking a group inside a crowded room with her Beskar hammer, the same type of fight scene that you saw her have at the end of Season 1, so it seems like she's going to get a bunch more fight scenes herself, like she's featured much more heavily in Season 3 than she was in previous seasons, even during the Book of Boba Fett, because we haven't got a lot with her character during Mando Season 2. It also seems like this scene of her attacking the group inside the room is connected to all the other scenes of the Mandos attacking on this particular sand-based planet, like it's part of some larger mission that they're all pulling off. There's a new scene of Mando flying his Naboo N1 Starfighter back to Navarro. I've already talked about what's happening on Navarro in the other Season 3 trailer footage in that other video, so like I said, link is below in the description for that. There's a couple other funny scenes here with Grief Karga. He's kind of taken over the town, become the administrator since the end of the Book of Boba Fett Season 1. There's a new scene of Bo-Katan eating food with Grogu, just seeming like it's totally casual, like she's not on the outs with Mando at this point. I think they're kind of playing it both ways, like there's a lot of tension between them because she wants the Darksaber and she's trying to get the Mando to do what she wants him to do. But a lot of his allegiance is still with the armor who hates Bo-Katan. So there's this weird triangle going on between them. There's a random scene of a bunch of Babu Frick aliens who are working on something in a regular shop. Now it's not actual Babu Frick from The Rise of Skywalker, it's just a bunch of members of his race working on something. There's an unfinished CG shot of Mando on a lush green planet standing near a waterfall. The CG is unfinished, so it looks kind of raw, but it's a completely different planet that they've been on before. 
there's a new shot of a full Imperial Star Destroyer inside Imperial shipyards. We haven't actually seen a full Star Destroyer on the series and Moff Gideon's flagship was just a cruiser. Bo-Katan stole that at the end of season two, like they confiscated it after they captured him. There's actually separate footage of her piloting that and piloting the ship that they stole during the Mandalorian season two. Remember, she's been stealing Moff Gideon's ships just to bolster her forces in their bid to retake the planet Mandalore. So it just sounds like we'll see scenes with her flying around on those ships. But the whole thing with the Star Destroyer is that it seems like it's a scene connected to the Empire and it seems like it would be more connected to Grand Admiral Thrawn because Moff Gideon, as far as we know, didn't have any actual full Star Destroyers. I think the idea is that during season three, like maybe at the end, there'll be some kind of tag scene that will tease Grand Admiral Thrawn or someone will mention him again during season three because Ahsoka mentioned his name during season two. So why wouldn't we see him? But I think Grand Admiral Thrawn will become an even bigger thing. We'll actually see him on screen, at least by the Ahsoka series episodes. There's a new scene of Grogu leaving a larger ship's cargo bay floating in his new pod with the top off so that he can see what's going on. And then there's new footage of them flying over the wreckage of the dome city of the Mandalorians on the Mandalore planet, just to remind you that like this is the goal during the season, them going back to the actual planet Mandalore. That really is like the big goal of Mando during season three is regaining his honor by doing what the armor told him to do, basking in these waters that were supposedly buried when the Empire bombed the planet during the Great Purge. I don't know how much actual time we're going to spend on the Mandalore planet in present day though, because there's so much footage on other planets. And like I said, there's a bunch of other stuff that they've been teasing, like all the Grand Admiral Thrawn stuff and the whole plot with Dr. Pershing and cloning Grogu trying to create force sensitive clones. We'll see what that actually connects to. Because the funny thing is, if you're a big fan of Star Wars Legends, if you read a lot of those Heir to the Empire trilogy books that Timothy Zahn wrote, there was a Luke clone during that. There were clones of Jedi Masters during that. And it seems like the Grogu cloning plot connects more with something towards that. Like Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau are adapting a lot of the Thrawn trilogy plot points into this newer Mandalorian storyline. We'll see what kind of force sensitive clones we see in future series because it sounds like it's going to be a little while before they completely pay that up. But I think because Dr. Pershing seems like a bigger deal during season three, we'll get at least enough clues to know where that's headed in a more concrete way. If you haven't read that classic Thrawn trilogy from back in the 90s, it was actually a pretty fantastic trilogy, but some of it isn't canon yet. Like Mara Jade is a big part of that storyline and she hasn't been brought back into the canon yet. It's just that a lot of the Grand Admiral Thrawn stuff from that story seems like it's resurfacing now during the Mandalorian season three and what's happening with the Ahsoka series. I'll do more videos for the Mandalorian season three and the Ahsoka series when we get more teaser trailer videos later this year. They're still going to be working on that stuff for a while. As I'm making this video, they're in the middle of the Marvel version of the D23 panel. There might be a couple big Marvel trailers. Whatever they wind up releasing, of course, I'll do videos for those too. So be sure to enable alerts for my channel. In my full House of the Dragon episode 4 video, we'll also post Sunday just like normal. Everyone click here for my Ahsoka trailer breakdown and Easter eggs and click here for all my Marvel trailer videos. I'll update the link as soon as I post videos for all those Marvel videos they release.